What's up guys, back with you. I'm Ben with Project Off-Road. Wanted to do this video for a long time. A lot of people have been asking for a walk around video of this Gladiator build that we have right now. Uh, so here it is, check it out. So guys, uh, probably the first thing I get asked on this Gladiator is uh, what size of tires are these and uh, wheels and lifts. So let's start there. I'll show you the, uh, the tire. So I'm running the uh, Nitto Trail Grapplers. These are 40 inches by 15.5 inches wide on 20 inch wheels. These are the Black Rhino Arsenals. So sorry this thing's kind of dirty. We've got a bunch of tire rash here from Moab. We had a blast down there to just rain. So super wet and uh, these things did really good. Love the Nittos. So originally I wanted these wheels, but I didn't want this offset that's on them right now. Um, but I wanted them in 20s. Uh, so I went with these. A little bit deeper dish than I like, but uh, as it turns out, looks really good. So as you guys can see, uh, I actually uh, painted the center cap right here. Actually, it's plastic dip gray, just to give it a little contrast. I think it looks pretty cool. And then uh, I had the, uh, this is basically just a sticker on the center cap. Stem caps. If you guys get these, uh, make sure you get a little rubber uh, insert inside. All these are is regular um, stem caps. You can make these yourself super easy. Take a 40 cal and your normal cap that goes inside, some hot glue, stick them in. There you go, in caps. So I wanna show you guys uh, what we had to do to make these uh, tires fit. So the first thing we did was cut the uh, factory rock rail back a little bit and uh, we trimmed these fenders up uh, quite a bit. Uh, they're still the stock fenders. I like the looks of those. Uh, also, it's rubbing here on the uh, the lower control arm, uh, which is not a big deal. Uh, it's just kind of barely hitting there, but uh, overall it does really good. Here you can see it at full flex. Uh, we do get a little rubbing on the fenders when it's full lock. thing here is the, uh, the bumper. Uh, this is the uh, Rival Aluminum Stubby. As you can see, it's a little bit dirty right now. Uh, last time we really had this thing out on the trails was down in Moab in Colorado. Had a great time. Here's some shots from that. Oh, oh my God. This bumper is super well designed. Uh, it's modular, so if you don't want to put the bull bar on, you can take that off. Uh, it's all aluminum, so it's super lightweight. And then underneath, it actually has a, uh, a metal structure, basically a uh, tub that the, uh, that the winch attaches to. So it's super strong. Comes with this uh, skid plate as well. Again, I uh, painted that a little bit darker gray. It's a little bit lighter color, but as you can see, everything is kind of sunk in so you can slide over it. Um, just super high quality stuff. We're running the, uh, the Warren, uh, VR Evo 12,000 pound winch. Uh, we've used this uh, quite a bit. We've got the synthetic line here and, uh, it's worked great. The only thing I don't like about the synthetic line is sometimes it'll pull in on itself. So you really got to wind these things pretty tight before you use them the first time. Otherwise it'll pull in on itself. Basically it just pulls so tight that it pulls the, the line into the, the windings. So you got to really wind those pretty tight. But other than that, synthetic line's awesome. It's really the only way to go. We've got the uh, Diode Dynamics S-Series pod lights. I've got a whole video review on these on my channel. If you guys are interested in these, I love these lights. Uh, these have an amber backlight, which I ordered. So you can run them. It's kind of a, just a, a dimmer light so you can get the effect of the lights. I'll pop these on and show you guys what that looks like. And 
guys, let me show you underneath uh, what we've done on this. We spent a ton of money on suspension. So First thing we did here was reinforce the axles with a truss kit, as you can see here. Although the guys who installed this didn't paint it really well, so it's rusting a little bit, got to fix that. But uh, definitely a must if you're running 40s on these uh, stock Dana 44s. We threw in 513 gears and we have the Rock Crawler Pro X upper and lower control arms, sway bar links, super beefy. See the lower control arm there upper control arm and the track bar all super high quality stuff with the uh, synergy four inch springs love these springs all right moving to the uh, back differential you can see the uh, cradle for the uh, rock crawler pro x this is a four link suspension and this is only possible on the gladiators due to the extra length but it deletes the track bar basically runs from right here over to the other side. Uh, with this deleted, it gives it a lot more articulation and uh, smooths out the ride quite a bit. So there's the lower control arm, uh, the upper control arm there. So we've got four arms, hence the four length, and the cradle actually acts as a truss as well. We've got that welded on for extra reinforcement. So guys, we uh, we spent uh, actually a lot of money and time on trying to get the right ride on this. Uh, these are the third springs that we tried. We first tried the uh, Rubicon Express springs and they completely sucked. Um, they were like GT3 RS Porsche stiff, um, like dump truck springs. They just completely sucked. Uh, but then we went with the Evo springs. They were better, they were pretty good. Uh, but the Synergy are by far the softest, and that's what we were looking for. Uh, Evo springs were good. We still have those. We can throw them on depending on what we are doing with it. But right now, the Synergy are giving us the best ride. We also went with the King 2.5 bypass shocks, and these are valves to go with the uh, Evo spring. But they work really well with the Synergy springs, and uh, these are fully adjustable. So guys, here's a better look at the Kings. These are the 2.5 inch bypass shocks with the adjustable reservoirs. You can see right here, uh, they basically click. Uh, they've got a real nice tactile feel to them. I think there's about 30 adjustments there, but we use these quite a bit down in Southern California. We took this thing out to the Glamis Sand Dunes and got these dialed in really good. Uh, we were bottoming out on some of the uh, the whoops and the jumps. Once we got these dialed, it uh, really smoothed the ride out to where we weren't bottoming out, but we had a really amazing ride. Kept up with all the razors down there, had a blast. Highly recommend King, have zero issues with these shocks. So guys, I'll just start with this side and work our way back. But uh, right here, we've got the Rugged Ridge Snorkel. This cost me my insurance. Um, apparently, um, they didn't like that I had a snorkel on this. So I've either got to take it off and get a mechanic to, to sign her, basically show the, the receipt that that work's been done so I can keep it insured. Otherwise, I've got to find another insurance company. But probably a smart move on their part because we, uh, we drive this thing in the water quite a bit. <laughs> so I want to show you how this uh, snorkel setup uh, works. So basically, uh, starts right here. You don't have to do a lot of cutting at all. There's just a little bit of trimming right back here that you've got to do to install this. And that's just plastic that you're trimming. It's really easy to do. Um, then it goes back here. The cool thing about the, uh, the Rugged Ridge is it's modular. So I can pop this off right here and have this be the intake, or I can put this extension on and have the intake be up there. Uh, really love this snorkel. Uh, I'll have a link in the description if you guys are interested in that, check it out. Another little mod we did was a 50 cal bullet antenna. These things look cool, they don't work great. We use the satellite radio, so it's fine. Uh, we put these uh, decals on right here. I think it gives it a nice look. Uh, nothing with the rock rails, these are all stock. Again, we had to cut them back here to, uh, to make these tires work, these super wide tires. And then this is what we've done, trimming them uh, to make it uh, so it clears when we're at full flex.
Another thing I did on this was this uh, trim. This is actually uh, vinyl. I was looking at wrapping the whole Jeep in this, but we decided to just go with the trim. Um, I've just got Nitto on there, one of our sponsors. Uh, love the Nittos, but um, this is actually just a piece of uh, red vinyl. Um, I think it's chrome matte red is what it's called. All right, let's talk about this rack. This rack is so cool. Uh, this is by Tro Racks. Uh, these guys um, were working with us, a few other people. This is their prototype. They've got a little bit different rack out now, but uh, very similar. Worked out a few kinks on this prototype, uh, but this rack is amazing. Uh, we put these handles on it, which are super helpful for the uh, tent when you're climbing up and down, trying to open that up. Um, but they have a bunch of different handles that you guys can attach onto it. Let me show you my favorite part about this rack. So right here, this rack is designed to uh, open up and uh, you can access the contents in your bed. Right now we've got the tonneau cover on, which is super cool because we're able to run a tonneau cover and a rack, which is awesome if you're in the rain or the dust and you don't have a huge load, you wanna keep your stuff dry and uh, out of all the elements be able to run a tonneau with this rack is amazing but as you can see this this rack opens and closes you can attach your uh, fuel cells on here your max tracks whatever you want um, on the inside or the outside and you can still reach in and get your stuff inside the uh, the bed of the truck all right guys this is the uh, light rider tonneau cover this is a soft cover and like i said this rolls up it's going to take two hands but i'll show you uh how easy it is to roll up with the uh, the trail racks on the back here so all you have to do is pop this and I'm gonna see if I can do this with my other arm to push this up just like that and this rolls up you get to these uh, pillars I'm doing this with one hand move it past and keep rolling um, so you go to the other side and you can roll this thing all the way back I'll pop the, uh, the rack up. So once you get that passed, you just keep it tight and roll it up. Then it's got clips up here. You can clip this up if you want to, but that's how easy it is. This truck has the uh, spray-in bed liner. Highly, highly recommend that. I love it. It's the factory bed liner. It came with the truck. Uh, but that's pretty much it for the... Uh, the back end here. We'll talk about the tent here for a second. This is a Tapui uh, three-person tent. Uh, it's awesome. Only a couple things that I hate about it is the stupid zipper that goes all the way around. I don't even zip it up anymore. It's just a pain in the butt to try to to try to do. Put these uh, red aluminum rails in there to fit it on top of the uh, trail racks. This is a three-person tent. Um, Two adults, maybe uh, an adult and two kids, but we ran these rails on here to uh, fit this up. Still need to trim off these uh, bolts. So guys, got the uh, tent folded out. I'll uh, put the uh, poles in. There's a couple poles all the way around that extend out the uh, the awnings and I'll show you inside. Guys, one of the benefits of having this massive offset is you have something to stand on when you're uh, putting up your tent. All right, guys, got the uh, tent set up. I uh, just want to show you inside. You kind of see uh, what it looks like, how much room there is. So here it is inside. Pui is a actually really pretty high quality tent. This is the pad that it comes with. That's how thick it is. This is adequate, but we got this just to have a little extra pad. It makes a huge difference. Uh, it's got skylights up there. If you want to take the, uh, the rain awning off, you can open that up and uh, sleep under the stars. Uh, pockets in the side here, both sides. This window opens up on both sides and uh, we were actually in Colorado and had the windows open up at night with the uh, the awning you don't have to worry about any uh, rain getting inside 
super comfortable. So here's our uh, recovery shackle. Uh, we got the red to go with kind of the gray and red theme. Scraped up a little bit from our last trip down in Moab. So the last time we were down in Moab, we actually had this truck um, underwater um, to about right here on the tailgate. Uh, we were in the hot tub, so this was all underwater. I'll show you the video, check this out. Um, but we've had zero issues since submerging half of the back end of this uh, Jeep. And uh, in fact, we've had this thing uh, basically floating uh, and had zero issues. It's done really, really so good. So guys, next thing I want to show you is one of my favorite mods. We did a uh, cutout on this uh, Gladiator so we could make it quiet or loud depending on if we're doing a long road trip or whatever. But check this out. So I just started it up. As you can see, we're really dirty in here. We need to clean this thing up. But this is the switch we installed right here. And uh, this is going to open the exhaust bypass valve. All right, guys, I want to show you what we've done on the inside of this. First thing right here is the uh, the air compressor. Check this out. So we've got the ARB twin air compressor. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, it is uh, mounted under the seat there. It's kind of hidden. Uh, super um, convenient to have this right here. Um, I've got this hooked up to the uh, aux switch. And uh, it fits pretty good in the back. It comes with this uh, plate basically protects it um, I don't know if you can see it there very well but uh, that's where we've got it in a little bottle of uh, looks like sanitizer so guys another one of my favorite mods here are these uh, headliners these are from Invictus off-road these are uh, molly panel headliners so uh, we've actually got these velcro to the, uh, the hot head headliners and uh, as you can see, they velcro right up. These are permanently attached. And then these, um, you can take them on and off as needed. Super handy with all the molly panel. Awesome uh, color. So you can pick whatever uh, color you want from those guys. And then as you can see over here, I've got a uh, Glock 19, some medical equipment and uh, knives and different things. Um, always with me, attached to the uh, the headliner super convenient quick access and uh, they also have these uh grab handles and these are also molly panel uh, grab handles super high quality stuff got these in the back as well again they're velcroed to the uh the hot head so you can take those on and off as needed and the grab handles another thing that we've got here is the throttle grenade um, this thing is awesome. It controls your um, pedal sensitivity. So we use this a lot um, when we were down in Moab uh, a couple weeks ago. So the throttle grenade is pretty vital if you're rock crawling at all. Uh, I turn the sensitivity uh, way down on the throttle so it gives me a lot more control so I'm not jerking over big obstacles uh, doing some climbs. Um, just it's a must-have if you off-road I've got a link in the description use boom project off-road and uh, you save a hundred bucks on your throttle grenade hey guys so one of the mods that you have to have if you have a gladiator or Jeep is the uh, taser mini it is so vital it's awesome so when you re-gear the Jeep you've got to uh, change the parameters inside the engine you can change the tire size uh, we re-geared before we had installed our Taser uh, Mini and uh, as soon as you shift into four low it throws the computer into kind of a, a tizzy it doesn't know what to do uh, but anyways tons of features there's a bunch of videos on these uh, online you can check them out highly highly recommend uh, it's saved us more than a number of times uh, some of the awesome features that you can do are sway bar disconnect and two-wheel drive which is super awesome if you're off-roading um, on like a you know fire trail or whatever you don't need four-wheel drive and you want to smooth out that ride uh, disconnecting that sway bar increases the, the ride quality exponentially 
Uh, you can do uh, lockers in Fort High, which is super, super awesome, uh, especially in the snow. Um, you need those tires spinning really, really fast to clear the, uh, the snow out of the lugs. Uh, just tons of different features. So I've actually got um, two of these, but um, this, one of them was the light and this other one's the, uh, the mini. And uh, basically just plugs in under your uh, dash and uh, you can go in and change all the different parameters. Uh, another thing that uh, I got with this was the ability to put on the forward facing camera, which is awesome. Uh, when we were down in Moab, we used that all the time to see over the hills. It's a must have if you're off-roading, it's a game changer to have that uh, forward facing uh, cam. And then on the Jeep, you can change um, how you want that displayed. I basically set it up so I can just hit that anytime and go to the forward facing cam. I can also go to the back cam. It's looking down because the tailgate's down now, but highly recommend a uh, Taser uh, Mini for your uh, Jeep. <clears throat> All right, guys, so we'll just go through and see what I have in my Jeep at this time. If you guys care, this is what I currently have. So I've got a little rain poncho here. Uh, just tucked in the side, that's Marmot. Uh, let's see, over here, got some uh, little pulled binoculars. They actually fit perfect right here. I can push this uh, bar down and it actually holds them perfect under the seat. Uh, let's see what my wife has on her side. Looks like we've got a uh, iPad charger. She's always doing real estate. Um, it's like a little map for uh, some trails down in Moab, That's where we're at last. Another map, Canyonlands. Um, some food. We need to clean this out, like I said. Uh, some uh, bug spray. You always need that. Uh, water bottle, Nitto, of course. And uh, what does she have over here? A uh, mass for where they require those. Another phone charger. Uh, looks like some paperwork. We still haven't opened the owner's manual toolkit that comes with the Jeep. Let's see what we got over here. Tire pressure gauge. Uh, these deflators, these things are awesome. If you don't have them, link in the description. Uh, some earphones. Uh, looks like a paddleboard inflator and uh, chums. <laughs> Gotta have the and uh, of course aspirin. I have so from Costco. More sunglasses. More sunglasses. All right. What else do we have in here? Uh, sunscreen. Uh, Nitto keys for the uh, the lock. And uh, let's see what we've got in the back here. We've got the. Uh, Demo shovel, uh, always have to have a shovel. Uh, some more uh, molly bags, um, just things. Kids normally sit back here, so looks like they've got sunglasses, some notepads, and uh, papers, hand sanitizer, whatnot. And let's see here. You can see a little bit of uh, mud splattered on this. Uh, let's see what we got back here. Uh, a little machete, got to have a machete, towels, targets, Target guys. So that's it guys, thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you guys made it this far, I really appreciate it. Please remember to subscribe and uh, share this video. If you've got a Bronco on the way, we'll see what's going to happen with that. Who knows, Ford, really kind of disappointed in them, but... Thanks so much for watching, guys. Peace.